Hello, this is Dave Marshall, and what I'd like to do today is show you how to make a print page in Inventor and properly dimension that. So what I want to do today is I want to show you how to use Inventor to make an IDW page, which is going to be a print page, and properly dimension that print page using our dimensioning rules. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go and find standard IDW. IDW stands for Inventor Drawing. So after we've created a standard IPT, our basic block shape, we're going to lay it out onto a print page or what Inventor calls a drawing page. So we're going to do standard IDW. So I'm going to double click that. Our printer prints on size A paper. This right here, if I look down here, it's on a size C paper. That's an industry standard. I want to change that to size A. So if I go over here to my browser bar, And I'm just going to right click, I'm going to say edit sheet. So let me do that again for you. I went up to sheet one and I right clicked on it. And I'm going to go edit sheet. And here it says sheet and size. So I'm going to go size A and hit OK. Notice my sheet got a little smaller looking and my title bar down here got huge. And I'm going to want to delete that. So I'm going to go up to ANSI large. Okay, that's going to get rid of this title bar. So I'm going to right click and say delete. So now I have a clean size A piece of paper. I know it's A because it's got the 1 and the 2 there and the A and the B. So when I walk by, I can take a, click, a close look at yours real quick to see if you got a size A paper. Now I'm going to go over to Base View. And I need to go find my drawing. So I'm going to go Open. And I'm going to look around. i got to go to the Desktop. That's where I saved mine. You're going to go to your Student Shares file or your personal file. I'm going to hit Desktop. <coughs> I'm looking for block four. There it is, block four IPT. And I'm going to hit open. And then if I just kind of move around the blocks there, the block though is a little bit too big uh, scale wise. So I'm going to go over to scale before I drop the block. I'm going to go over to scale and I'm going to change that to 0.75 or three quarters. Notice my image got a little smaller. Remember also in class we said the front view always goes down in the bottom left hand corner. And see here my orientation is on front view. If your orientation is on front view and you don't have the front view, you can always go here and then you can click, you know, and turn it to what side you want the front view and click custom view. Okay. And it will bring it to the view that you want. So I'm going to left click and that put in my front view. Now if I just move the mouse up, it automatically, if I left click in this position, will put in my top view. I'm going to come over now down into my right hand side, click. And if I want to, I'm going to put an isometric in here as well. I'm going to click up there, left click. Notice that there's just boxes around and no shapes. I need to create those shapes. So if I do a right mouse click and hit create, it will draw those shapes in for me. And one thing I like to have my students do, is I like them to have to shade in the isometric. So see how there's little red dots right there? Boom, peer around the outside of my shape. If I now right click and go to edit view, I can get to my shaded tab. So if I click this button right here and then hit OK, that's going to shade that in. At this point, we're going to need to dimension it. I tell all my students to dimension 5, 3, and 2 first and always put them in the same spot. So I need to go over to my Annotate tab up here on the top left. I'm going to left click that. And then my Dimension tool is going to come out right here. So the first thing I always have my students do is dimension the 5 inch on the front view. And I place it in between views. Our first dimensioning rule says identify the overall largest dimension. So I've done that and I'm going to click and I'm going to drop that. I click that so it doesn't appear again. Hit OK. And then I always have my students dimension and it's going to be the same on all of our drawings because we all started off with a 5, a 3, and a 2. I always have them put the 3 inches on the top view over to the right. And then I always do the 2 inches on the side view. So I'm going to click the dot I'm going to come down here, I'm going to click the other dot because I'm going between points, and I'm going to bring the two out. 
So now I've got my basic block shape dimensioned. Because when we did our basic block shape, it was 5, 3, and 2. At this point, I've got to say, what makes this block different? So next thing I want to do is I want to go down to the front view. <clears throat> and let's talk about some of our dimensioning rules. It says don't double dimension. Double dimensions would be if I had two dimensions that represented the same thing. So if I came up here and clicked here and here and brought that 5 down and left it there, that 5-inch length is the same as this 5-inch length. So I don't want that. So I'm going to hit the Escape key to turn my tool, my dimension tool off. So the dimension tool is on. If I hit my Escape key, it turns it off. And I'm going to right-click on that dimension and delete it. Another common mistake where people double dimension is they come over and grab here on the uh, side view. Oh, i got to turn my dimension tool back on. And they come up and they put that through there. They think those are different. They're the same. They're the width, the distance across, or how far back it goes. This is three inches here on my isometric. Okay? It's three inches here across the side. Those are the same dimension. So again, escape to turn my tool off. Right click, delete. Rule number three says place smaller dimensions inside larger dimensions. So let's do that. I'm going to turn my dimension tool on. I've got a dimension, this top line, two inches. That's in between or below it. If I put it outside the five, that would be breaking the dimensioning rule. I want to place smaller dimensions inside larger dimensions. So I'm going to drop that down there. I'm also going to drop another two inch dimension in there. And we should try to run these dimensions together, get them going right in a straight line. So I've got two inches, two inches, what's left one inch. Should I dimension that one inch there? If I did, that would be double dimensioning again, because one plus two plus two equals five. So we should be able to do some math and figure that one out. So let's see here, what else do we have? Um, this guy here we haven't dimensioned. So we got to get the one-inch dimension out there. I could put it back here, but that would be placing it on the object. And that's going to break rule number four that says don't dimension on the object. So that would be putting it on the shape itself. So I'm going to bring it out here and dimension it right out there. And the last one is they want us to make sure that we place dimensions in between the views. So down here, that's below the views. That's no good. This is off to the side of the view. That's no good. So the only place really we can dimension is in between the top and this uh, front view here. I can dimension in between the front and the side. And I can dimension in here. This is considered in between the top and the side view. Remember I got my rebound line in here? I can dimension in here. So now I just want to double check to make sure I have all my dimensions. I've got the overall length of 5. I've got the width of 3. i got the height of 2. I know that this is one inch down. I got one inch there. That's the same as from here to here, the same one inch. I don't need to do from here to here because I know one minus two gives me the one that's left over. And I've got two, two, and I know there's going to be one left over here. So I'm finished. I've dimensioned it properly. I put all my dimensions in the proper spot, and I follow the rules. Remember, number one, identify the overall largest dimension. We've done that. Number two, don't double dimension. We haven't done that. Number three, it says place smaller dimensions inside of larger dimensions, which we've done. And we've run, run them together nicely here. Number four says don't dimension on the object. Well, there's no dimensions on our shapes or objects, so we've done that well. And number five says, says place dimensions between the views, and we've done that. Nice job. Last thing we're going to do here is put our name on it. So I'm going to go to the text tool. I'm going to click down along the bottom because that's where I like to put my name on my drawings. And I'm going to type in Mr. Marshall, period number, we'll say this is period number one, and block number four. And then you're done. We're going to go up and we're going to save it into our account. Nice job.